I was all the time thinking when Maharaj will say something to me. <laughs> and last week when I told you that um, I am going out for preaching in the courts and in the evening time I try to go to some my bodies, families and I was reporting you and you told me can you preach like this in America? And I said no Maharaj Yesterday, when I was putting my jeans, <laughs> your causeless mercy, said, Mahaprabhu, you are putting jeans. <laughs> okay, Raj, from today, <laughs> Actually, all the time I was thinking <coughs> Parampara as we think the Prabhupada, the started movement, nothing with him. Krishna with us, with the holy name of with him. So Bhakti Pad started the same way, New Vrindava. And all the time you are asking us to chant and dance. Sometimes I, I was, when you were coming down, I was just thinking that in car center sometimes if somebody is not coming and attending and sitting in the temple and they not attending program and they are talking on telephone or talk, gossiping with my wife. I so get so angry of those people and like, they come here. <laughs> and I realize Maharaj must be thinking like that only when people are not dancing and chanting when they are coming in the program. But Maharaj is not expressing. Unfortunately, I am so heavy, I tell people. <laughs> Maharaj, really, I mean, I can go on narrating several things, but I'm, sometimes I compare things when I join this con and where I was in the association of Giraj Maharaj brought us in Krishna Consciousness Movement introduced to Bhakti Bhat. And we are practically attending all the programs, all the gurus were coming and I was practically the official translator for them, going to Mayapur and Pindavan, attending practically GBC's meeting and taking prasadam with all the gurus and all the gurus practically was thinking of uh, any, without any reservation, I was going in anybody's room and sleeping there and taking Mahaprasadam with gurus and all the time. But Maharaj, really speaking, what you are giving now, this group, Srila Prabhupada wanted this GVC meeting to be held in Mayapur, as Bhakti said, seven days only for chanting and dancing. And they can talk few hours, two, three hours to manage their whole year's program. You are really the real representative of the Prabhupada. Having this League of Devotees, which Srila Prabhupada actually established in Chhasi, this is the first thing Prabhupada has done. And in that parampara, 
you are doing what Srila Prabhupada wanted to do. You, this is real GVC meeting of Prabhupada. This is real GVC is here. They are here instead of seven days, they are here for three days. And those three days, nothing else but morning to evening, 24 hours, talking about Krishna, dancing and chanting. Hardly oh. few minutes we can talk anything about our so-called material management. And the worse it is, better we are spiritually. Because both things can never go together. If you are so many material a corporation throughout the world doing wonderful management, so what? Are they, are they spiritually God conscious? Actually the total solo pro, pro, solution of every problem you have got actually. Yes, Krishna says surrender to me. Bhaktipal is saying surrender. And you are asking people how to surrender. You are asking us to change the holy name of Lord. You are asking us to dance. And if we develop that love and chanting and dancing, you actually you will solve the problem and you are really solving the problems. What, what type of problems we are having? Can anybody imagine? When we left this corner and came out. And in this situation and Bhakti Park has been house arrest. And I, unfortunately, I am a little different personality in the sense that I get involved several times in several politics. But I have seen in this all this thing that how, without you, where are we happy? Where we, where we, will, we would have gone. We were shaking. Many of our God builders were shaking. Any time they would have jumped out of this leave of divinity or hurry, this con new Vrindavan East. But you, Maharaj, saved us. I, I, because I, I, I am not just saying something, Maharaj, just because I am, I have to say, but I am just visualizing what has happened in the last seven years. Every movement, every place, what you are teaching us. Morning to evening, you are telling us, morning, that, you see, though you have quoted several times from Maitri Upanishad, that we can get a person completely liberated if the Grasta people, you are not just quoting for the sake of quoting, several lectures you are quoting, if we can make our material life and the spiritual life at least to that standard that whatever time we give to our spiritual life and whatever time we are giving for our spiritual life, if he reach same importance if we can give, our life is successful. You are asking us to do something by, by which we can really make progress. But we are so idiots. Because uh, that is our parampara. Prabhupada was here. 33 years he was in India. And we are so idiots. Prabhupada was teaching love of God. But he said, no. We don't want to listen to you. We have our own way of doing things. We have our own material management and we have got our own plans. We want to do according to our own. You, you are never disturbing our plans. But if we can reach to the standard which is established in Sastra, our life will be successful. But when we have not heard Prabhupada, how can we hear you? But you are so merciful. Because less mercy in spite of our adamant behavior, you are giving us causeless And the result is coming. The important how Guru Kurukshetra, Rishikesh project, how you are talking. One day you are talking, all of us, Naji, Yardananda, and you are giving, you are, how serious you are. How, what message you have given to all of us about this project of Bhaktipad and what Bhaktipad has said, and that's why the project is coming up. What was the position of the doctors here? All of us, we were just getting one is there, one is there. Nobody was, nobody was sure how long we will be living together. Because we know 95% of the Prabhupada disciple has left the movement. And you know, you are the only source. And in a situation like this, when the, all the doctors were working at one place, and overnight they have to leave that place, and they are coming, and the, you are, they, they are still so spiritually so strong that they can do anything whatever you will do. 
Otherwise, in such type of situation, uh, it's, it's very easy to talk philosophy. But those people who have given up their job, they have to pay, get their residential premises, they have their families. This is not a joke. But they, all these people, because of your preaching, because of your costless mercy, they are all wonderfully taking the things and they are sure that one day, whatever you are, the way you are guiding them, they will be, they will be doing their job perfectly. Maharaj, like that, because I know there are going to be injunction against me, I can go on talking like that, but in the conclusion I need only say one thing. Maharaj, conclusion will not be more than two minutes. <laughs> Maharaj, who has taught us the philosophy that whether one is like Narad Muni, or another is like Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj was Grastha, and Narad Muni was a Brahmachari or Sanyasi. But both of them can be respected the same way, just like here we respect Devamit Prabhu or Hinda Hridanan Prabhu. You see, this practical example, you, how you have trained these people, where you have taken so much care of every individual, I am really envious of some people because how, but that's not, you see, that's my fault because I, I, I have not taken that much of association. You are always ready to give. That's not the, you are ready to give association to everybody. But every individual devotee, the, the progress which they have done in last two years, you, you yourself have said, Mahaprabhu, show me any center throughout the world where you have got a disciple or couple of the devotee like we have got in India. Show me, he, Maharaj was giving me names and I don't want to mention the names here, but you can understand that he was just comparing. Said, Maharaj, I said, Maharaj, but I am really disturbed, disturbed in the sense that these people are not giving 50% of their time. They are giving 75%, they, they, they are giving too much time for their business, this, this, this. Maharaj, they are 10% actually not giving time, they are giving 15, 30, when you are here they are up to 30% when you go, then again 9%. Maharaj said, perfectly all right. Maharaj is so merciful, he said, this is wonderful. But you show me any other, any other place throughout the world, their people are giving, ready to give this much of time, money, energy, the, and the way their consciousness and everything. So, the way Maharaj, you have really way how to tackle the situation. Though and I cannot, I am not saying that Prabhupada was not powerful and Prabhupada, Krishna wanted him to have some bigger plan. If suppose Prabhupada was involved here in Indian preaching, then might be, you know, it was not possible for him to go to America. But this was Krishna's arrangement, so he wanted him that, okay, Indians, they should not follow him initially. So there Prabhupada has gone to America. That's uh, Krishna's plan. But now, Krishna has planned and uh, Krishna has sent us you, Paras, and uh, I, my only desire is that one day those one, I know it, that's just like in Iskon, this uh, Giraj Maharaj, or Gopal Krishna Maharaj, or Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj, they are all the time thinking, oh Mahaprabhu, uh, as if, I'm, I, if I can't come to their group, or this group, or that group, so, I am just, if I can become a loving servant of your, not a group, if I can serve you, Maharaj, my life will be successful. Krishna oh. conscious, in a very short time. Now, I request our beloved president of Sri Sri Radha Gopinath Temple, the Reverend Prabhu Sri It is always a very difficult task to have to speak after Mahaprabhu. <laughs> he sets a, a different standard. He has completely disrupted my ideas and my plans for speaking. <laughs> so coming to the point, I remember the first time I saw Radhanath Maharaj, that was about, I think, six months after I was initiated by Bhaktipal. And that was in Jagannath Puri. 
when I had come to join the devotees from another place. And uh, I was very fortunate that by Krishna's arrangement, I somehow happened to bump into the Sankrit and party of the devotees. And I was led there because I heard the sound of the Karatavas and Nidangas. And from a distance as I saw the group approaching, I saw one effulgent figure dancing in front. And that was the first time I had seen Maharaj. And that image still persists in my mind. And I will never forget that. The most, one of the most striking qualities about Raghunath Maharaj that I see for among the so many qualities one cannot list out is that he makes everybody feel very special. Some days back in Bhagavatam class we were discussing uh, Krishna's pastimes with the gopis where every gopi felt that Krishna was dancing with her. Also in Lord Chaitanya Sankirtan party, so many different parties were there and each party felt that Lord Chaitanya was with them. This is a very special quality the Lord has. And the Lord imbibes His great devotees with this very quality. So we see that the, the great devotees of the Lord also exhibit this quality. And I have seen that Maharaj makes everybody feel that they have a particular, a very special relationship with Him. And uh, everybody goes back feeling completely satisfied. So this is a very, very important quality. And as a result of this, he has completely won the trust and confidence and he has won the hearts of all the devotees. And he does so wherever he goes. And this is something that I have also experienced and also I'm sure all of you have seen and heard. As far as I'm concerned, Radhanath Maharaj has his own plans for me. I don't know what they are. But whatever he has, I just want to follow them. Uh, my problem is I think I'm a very great devotee. So Radhanath Maharaj has his plan accordingly for me. So he has this particular way of dealing with just the right amount of tact so he knows that I should not go by the wayside. And yet with enough firmness to keep me in place and to see that I don't get bigger than my boots. So, I can say that it is Him who has been nourishing the lives of not only myself, but all the devotees, not only in Bombay and the other centers in India, but also in New Vrindavan and other places. And I really do not know how we can repay the debt we have particularly the debt that I have towards Him. All I can think of is just to surrender to Him and do whatever He says. Initially, I remember that before I met Him, when I took initiation, I did not have too much association with Srila Bhakti Path, just a little bit. I had read all His books, I had met His devotees, I had also met Him on a couple of occasions, but I did not have much association. But as I got to know Radhanath Swami better and better, it even brought me closer to Bhakti Pad because I realized if this is what Radhanath Swami is like and he surrendered to Bhakti Pad, then what must really Bhakti Pad be like? And that really got me going. It really got my spiritual life going and finally convinced me enough to surrender my whole life to Krishna consciousness, to Bhakti Pad and to Maharaj. So I owe a lot and I do not know if my words can express. So. I hope that in the next, in the, the rest of my life, that my actions will bear out my thoughts in this regard. And I seek your forgiveness for all the uh, fault finding that I do. I keep coming to you, pointing out so many things. And you're always tolerant and compassionate. Uh, you never get upset or angry. You just tolerate and because you know what's best for my spiritual progress. So I do hope that you will continue to shower your mercy on me and to keep me engaged in your service and continue to look after me the same way that you have been doing so far. Hare Krishna. <laughs> there is a story of Madhavendra Puri when he went to do the circumambulation of the Gaurdhan 
in the night he became very tired and he sat down to rest under a tree and because of his ajagar vritti and ayachit vritti he wouldn't go and beg for any alms or food so he was just there and this little sweet boy came up to him and uh, told him that why don't you go and beg for some food and uh, in our village it's not the custom to allow anyone to go hungry and sleep hungry so here i brought a pot of milk for you i came to know that you are sitting here under this tree and he gave him the pot of milk <coughs> later when madhavendra puri came to know who this little boy was by krishna's inconceivable potency when he revealed himself madhavendra puri wept very bitterly he wept because krishna had come there and he somehow by krishna's inconceivable potency he could not see and actually it was krishna's leela it was krishna's past time madhavendra puri is a pure devotee but in our own small way we also experience this similar episode every day in our life we are all most of us are in the neophyte stage so we don't realize that we have here one of the dear most devotees of lord chaitanya he is right there in front of us and we don't recognize we don't make use of his association we don't know how to please him because there is no difference between the lord and the lord's devotee the lord's devotee is as good as the lord and we do not know how to make use of this beautiful opportunity in fact from what i hear the new vrindavan devotees they say that the devotees of bombay are so much more infinitely fortunate because they are they are just longing for radhanath maharaj's association in fact he is a friend and guide and mentor to 100% of the devotees of new vrindavan and they can hardly get time to meet him because of his engagements and here he spends more than half a year so we can understand how fortunate we are to have radhana swami here with us and lastly i would like to say that all the intelligence with which we try to grasp the philosophy and all the study of the scriptures and all the association of devotees and all the austerities we may perform for charities we may give it is only to bring us to one point to understand and start enjoying the nectar of the holy name to start enjoying the chanting of the kirtan and we are fortunate that we have not had to go through any of this process we need not read any books we need not perform any charities we need not long for anything to come to that realization that how much this chanting is nectarian maharaj has with this personal example with his absolutely perfect behavior he has showed us that all these scriptures reading has to bring you to one point and only one point to start enjoying the kirtan of the lord so we are very deeply indebted to maharaj for coming here and giving us this most complicated formula in the most simple way and explaining to us that this is the only thing and to demonstrate that once we start enjoying the kirtan then we have completely understood the philosophy and lastly maharaj please forgive this rascal raghunath for all the offenses committed at your lotus feet and please continue to shower your mercy thank you very much om namo bhagavate upasama shilayo paratanaatmaya namo kinchana vittaya vishudusha bhaya namaha ಪರಮಹಂಸ ಪರಮಗುರುವೇ ಆತ್ಮಾರಾಮಾಧಿಪತಿ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಸೆಟ್ ದಟ್ ದ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಅಂಡ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತ ಆರ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸನ್ ಲೈಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಡಿಸಿಮಿನೇಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಲೈಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಪರೆಂಟಲ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ವಿಶ್ ದ ಡಾರ್ಕ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಗ್ನೋರೆನ್ಸ್ till very recently however this sunlight was covered by the hazy cloud of mental speculation and impersonal thoughts 
It was Srila Prabhupada who out of his causeless mercy uncovered this cloud by his illuminating and powerful commentaries for the benefit of us conditioned souls. But for many, the blaze of the sun of transcendental knowledge was so scorching that one could not take complete shelter of it. We are now seeing that scorching sunlight revealed by Srila Prabhupada is now being transformed into gentle, soothing moonlight 